And I think, honestly, think the crowdfunding method is is the future. It's a way to bypass, you know, venture capitalists and, and, and banks in that sense. Surround yourself with people that know what they're doing. Because uh, the project might quickly have a downfall if you don't. Why wouldn't you do an STO if you, if you could choose between an ICO and an STO, you know? If you want to bring dividends to your investors, STO is the only way. everyone hi Jean. yeah hello so uh first of all my name is Jean dave this is a live stream from starbucks and we have a we have a very special uh, live today first of all uh we're presenting our clients our partners and great guys from mariana mining companies they uh we're working on our first sto and that would be an sto of security token offering of mariana mining company uh, we're doing that live from the port of Montenegro, where we actually physically meet and where we discuss our plans. We hope that uh, you will enjoy uh, the presentation. Uh, also, we have, uh, so first of all, I would like to introduce you to Will and Igor, uh, founders and management guys on the Mariana, Mariana Mining Company. Uh, hi, Will. Hi, Igor. Uh, we hi, guys. Have... <laughs> Hello. We have Ross and then Boris from Stobox side. Uh, Boris, head of uh, head of analytics and co-founder. Ross is chief operating officer and also co-founder of Stobox. And uh, I think uh, we're gonna do the following. So we're gonna give uh, uh, our uh, Mariana Mining guys uh, a quick intro, and uh, they will spread the word about their. A security token offering and then uh, i would go through the product of uh, dashboard on the example of stobox uh this this technology that we uh, use we develop is the technology that mariana mining will be doing the security token offering on so i hope you will enjoy and uh, stay with us thank you mm -hmm. yep Thank you, Jean. I want to add that I'm very happy to uh, conduct, to run the stream with our first STO client, Mariana Mining, and it is a pleasure. And I think it is great opportunity uh, for, for, for the community of Mariana Mining investors and for Stobox community to participate in this investment opportunities because uh, we, and we are currently in the process uh, of completing the full cycle of STO and soon Mariana Manning will go live with their dashboard, uh, digital securities dashboard, and you guys will have the possibility to also invest in this project. So thank you guys for your participation. Thank you for joining Stobox and thank you one more time. Yeah, if you let me to share them, uh, if you want as well. I am extremely excited to participate on this stream and to share the team with you. Actually, majority of the clients that we're having are fantastic projects with either with a great value of ratio of risk to return. So I, uh, I am glad to present those opportunities to the community and have, even we have many more upcoming, as well as glad to present the result of the work that we have been doing on the background for all of this time, choosing the best jurisdiction starting how this should be structured, etc. So not wasting your time anymore. Igor, Will, please tell us more about, uh, and present your project to the community. I'll, I'll go first and then Igor can jump in and introduce himself as well. So I'm Will Skur. Um, essentially, my background is primarily construction. So I'm a director of a construction company out in the uh, Balkan region um, and got into crypto roughly about 2019 through Unstoppable Domains and Zill and have essentially been going down the rabbit hole ever since. Um, so this is where we've got to. We, we looked at this investment last year and we've taken it forward. I'll pass it across to Igor because Igor is going to go through the first part of the presentation. So thank you. All right. Um, well, hello, everyone. I'm a bit under the weather at the moment, but um, it's fine. Uh, my name is Igor Seferovic. I'm from Norway studied in the UK and came to Montenegro to uh, develop real estate and got into crypto in 2017 for a German company that had a patent on combustion chips and they wanted to do an STO. So we did that. And then Will and I decided to do a 
crypto mining project. Um, so here it is. Ross, if you could do the second slide, please. Um, so crypto mining, basically I'm just gonna go into why we chose crypto mining. I'm not gonna explain mining itself. I assume that most of you will know how crypto mining works. Um, so I'm just gonna focus on the benefits investment wise. Um, it's a handoff investment, which means you don't have to trade day to day. You don't have to worry about where you're gonna invest, what you're gonna do. It's a hands-off investment. We take care of everything. Um, you sit and enjoy dividends on a monthly basis. For us, uh, we could fit into the exemptions of an STO, which means we could, we could skip the prospectus stage. Meaning we could save a lot of money whilst doing a successful project, you know, between two and five million euro. So that's what we opted for. We looked at other projects as well, but crypto mining had the best returns by far. Um, that brings me to the point of high ROIs. The audit done by STO Box and, and Bigsbit um, estimates the internal rate of return to about 168%, if I'm correct, it's soft cap, which is immense. Um, and this does not include other revenue streams, such as if you cho chose to stake it, your capital gains, et cetera. So it, it has a lot of potential revenue streams. One of major importance is uh, that we're tax exempt in Georgia, which we'll, we'll talk more about in the Georgian chapter of the presentation and what that means being in a free zone in, in regards to taxation, et cetera. Um, it's a steady source of passive income so you can forget about it and it's going to make you money for the next 10 years if you opt to invest in this scheme. And lastly, I would like to say that um, the benefit of why we chose it is the immersion cooling aspect, which Ross, if you go to the next slide, I can explain our mining operation in contrast to a standard airflow one is exactly the fact that we don't use uh, airflow, meaning we take out the fans and put our equipment into dielectric liquids. So I'll explain shortly what that entitles, putting it in immersion cooling liquid. So when you take out the fans, you're already saving 20 to 30% on just pure energy consumption. And secondly, you can overclock the machine. So me meaning if the machine works in 100%, you can overclock it to 140, 150, 160%, exponentially increasing your revenue. Um, so the, the Two of our main advantages in our mining operation is firstly the free zone in Georgia, which we'll talk about, and the immersion cooling. So to explain what immersion cooling is, to explain how it works shortly, um, it's a dielectric liquid, means it does not conduce uh, or conduct electricity. So it doesn't, it doesn't damage the electronic parts. Um, and it boils at around 56 degrees, meaning it evaporates. And then a coil, condenser coil, cools it down, it drips down. It's in a closed system, so it evaporates and it goes down again, meaning it cools a lot better than a traditional airflow. So imagine a fan blowing into the machine is not going to be able to cool the whole machine. So let's let's go through what you know immersion cooling offers. So if you can see at the slide. 40% um, hash rate increase, that's, uh, that's an average number. It could be anything from 30 to 80%. Smart heat utilization, meaning that the liquid covers the whole machine. It cools it unilaterally instead of some parts being cooled more like you would have in an airflow system. 200% um, equipment lifespan, meaning the machines most likely will live almost twice as long meaning we won't have to buy new machines for twice as long, which is, which is crazy. 100% um, noise and dust removal. So because it's in liquid, there is much less noise and no dust buildup, meaning that the equipment is gonna last longer, of course. Um, power consumption is down, as I said, due to the fans being removed and 90% less floor space required as you can go up high and you can put them into racks. So even though the startup costs are higher with the, with the immersion cooling um, setup, 
the opera model uh, far outdoes a traditional airflow mining venture. Um, and lastly, we use an AMS system, which is an auto, auto management system to optimize like reaction times, minimize losses, mm -hmm. see which cells are faulty, see which cooling racks are faulty or wherever the problem is, we have a smart system connected and uh, we, we, we can shut it remotely. That is basically summarizing the mining operation and explaining emerging cooling. Um, Will will now explain the STO aspect of it. So I'll leave that up to him. Hi guys, um, can you just move on to the, okay, you move on to the other side. So just going on in regards to the minimum buy-in. So I'll go through this point by point to an extent and then go off on a tangent probably. So the minimum buy-in of the STO itself is 10,000 um, euros. Oh, the equivalent and or, or more but that's the minimum buy-in we um it's a regulated dividend paying security and the range that we have um that we're working towards in terms of exemptions it's a minimum of two million and a maximum of five million uh, in terms of the token lifespan or the operation lifespan itself it's a 10-year life cycle so at the end of the 10 years the operation will wind down uh, that's captured within the actual documentation that you can see if you just go onto our website have a look we will be allocating funds for replacing of equipment we'll be allocating funds for expansion of equipment um, of the mining operation itself so i mean if you're going to look at it from let's say a crypto angle you could kind of think of it as a auto compounding farm in that over time you'll be getting more rewards as we go along uh, in terms of Right, so another important factor actually is external audits. So once you've invested and the operation is running, we're going to have a third party audit company who's going to audit not just obviously the operation, uh, the operation generally. So the intention is to have them in BVI and also um, in Georgia as well. Uh, I just realized I didn't mention the SDO is being run from BVI, so it's British Virgin Islands. Uh, I'll come on to that a little bit later though. Um, in terms of AML checks. So we have stringent KYC and AML checks in place because obviously this is an STO and they need and we are subject to regulation. And in regards to that, everybody is subject to this, regardless of who it is. And we um, and if any, first of all, we have to be whitelisted, whitelisted, but if anybody is going to sell the MMI token itself, that also needs to be the person you're selling it to needs to be whitelisted as well uh, prior to that actually occurring in terms of private placement fund we've got up to 120,000 euros that's for the private placement that's all we need to cover all fees design um, marketing uh, and when I say design I mean design of the operation facility itself uh, and marketing it also includes lawyer fees and everything else um, and that's what we've identified uh, everything from 120,000 so that's the, the private placement round everything from that or above that is essentially public placement. That's subject up until uh, the two million, and that will be going into an escrow account. So the aim is to keep that by a third party. Um, it'll be, it'll a third party will have control of that. And if we do not manage to get up to the two million, all funds will return back to the investors. Um, in terms of the financial aspects, so we actually started looking at this in roughly about September last year. Um, and then we obviously did the calculations ourselves, started going through everything. We then went through a process where we got that audited by SDO Box. And then in addition to that, we got it audited by Fixbit and their partners because they're the measure mining um, technology providers and also been within the game for a long time. So that was prudent to do. And then in addition to that, then we got SDO Box to re-audit um, those figures as well. So it's been through roughly about three more audits and potentially we'll do one more depending upon where crypto goes in the next in the following month or two. Um, so there's three scenarios within the um, documentation that you're going to look at in the Excels. You've got realistic, you've got pe uh, pessimistic and you've got optimistic. So there's three different scenarios. You can change that within like the first tab roughly uh, and it shows you each scenario and the figures adapt obviously based on that. And that's in a nutshell, the SDR itself and what we're doing 
I'll move on to Georgia itself. So Georgia actually, Georgia. So why did we pick Georgia? So Georgia has, I think it's the third. Uh, sorry, can you move on to the next slide? I've got, sure. If that's okay. Thank you. Going ahead of things. So in terms of Georgia, so we looked at Georgia, I think it's the third largest in terms of mining output in the world. Second largest, sorry, I just got corrected by Igor there. Um, <laughs> So that's one of the, that was one of the contributing factors. So we looked at this in more detail, and then what we did is we is we identified industrial free trade zones, which give the best um, rates in terms of electricity, etc. And that is actually displayed again within our within the figures that you can download from our website. There's no taxes, and what we mean by that is within this um, industrial free trade zone itself. To get crypto taxes, there's no taxes in terms of VAT, there's no taxes in terms of import tax, etc. So we will, I know that we, you know, so in essence, we'll be able to buy more equipment as a result of that upfront at the beginning. Uh, that's also throughout the entire area, although we do need to agree concessions and time limits in regards to that. So, but that's a, that's a process that we'll be doing with the free trade zone. Um, when we actually get to that point. So in terms of workforce as well, there's a lot of skilled workforce in Georgia, but also the labor costs are relatively cheap. So this is obviously a consideration when we were looking at it. And I have already mentioned the crypto mining powerhouse. So I don't need to go into that. I'll skip that and run that from the beginning. And there's existing companies already there. So BitFury is actually in one of the sites that we're considering and looking at. And the digital infrastructure that they have is, you know, co comparatively to the area and for instance, in the Balkans, it's well ahead of um, surrounding countries. And also, it's just a great place for us to, to relocate to, <laughs> ultimately, with uh, Tbilisi being a, a nice city, you know. So that that's one of the considerations as well. <laughs> um, so, I mean, in, in an essence, that's, that's Georgia. So if you can move on to the next slide. Sure. Thank you. So we looked at various um, locations where we would actually have the SDO and we'll be subject to regulation. Uh, we have actually shared that with the community uh, in terms of documents and the process. The process itself, so we, we looked at, um, we were at the three ones we were looking at, two was Switzerland, uh, Caymans and BVI. BVI came out ahead simply to the cost due to the time frame involved, albeit we do realise that there is you know, less consumer protections if you compare it comparatively to the other two hypothetically i suppose you, you could argue that um in terms of the regulation itself so we are we there's no with so this is another actually aspect as well so there's no withholding tax within that area which is important uh, really more from the investor angle not, not ourselves so we will essentially issue out all rewards directly to the investor on the profit sharing model um and pro dividend profit sharing model and it makes it easier from that regard. And also the third party representatives, so our lawyers like Ogia um, and tax advisors, and also third party audit companies in terms of taxation and um, accounting, are also reasonable in terms of cost. And the ease of which we could launch the SDO was, as I said before, was one of the contributing factors to the decision. Um, if we can move on. I mean, okay, so this is essentially we've gone through everything in a nutshell. There is detailed descriptions of everything on the website, downloadable. You can play around with it. You can have a look at it. We've got the white paper. The white paper does need updating. Um, so we need to add some disclaimers and we're in communication with the um, law firm now. However, all of it's on there. It's a work in progress. And so we actually get that completed Ooh. end of August. Everything should be up there and completed by. And also, so in terms of time frame as well, we're, we're at the stage now where we are creating a bank account um, mm -hmm. linked to the BVI holding company. And that will take roughly about four to six weeks. So approximately the SDO itself will be launched either mid-September or towards the end of September is the reasonable time frame. And I mentioned that because the program needs to update in the new white paper uh, and on the website. So that's an important consideration. We have a Telegram group. We're not actively promoting anything because we can't, simply due to the fact that we're going through an SDO process. So that's why it's private. 
and that's why we're not actively as I said, promoting anything outside of uh, the private groups that we have at this moment in time, or well, the one private group that we have at this moment in time. And that's it, really. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you, Will. Thank you, Igor, for your presentation. Uh, guys, I see your questions to this live stream. Of course, we will answer them in our question session. Jean? I will be quick. I will be quick. First of all, thank you, Will. Thank you, Igor, for insightful presentation. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions from the community. So it's the first thing. Secondly, I would like to say thank you for unlocking the possibility of triple digit returns to classical investors. Uh, which is a thing, it's, it's it more than meets their appetite uh, because we all know that uh, crypto mining is the subject to uh, high returns and not many people can get access to that market. So by doing what you are doing, you're basically creating a possibility of non, for not crypto people or for people who are unable to mine themselves. And in the current situation, the current market, we understand that it's a it's a, it's a hell of a job to mine yourself. Uh, so you're unlocking that possibility to a regular investors and it's a great business model. And that's also something that we're, that we're happy to support and we'll look forward to a successful round. Uh, so again, thank you. Uh, sec I first of all, I would like to show you uh, the dashboard. And that's more from the investor standpoint. Uh, we all know that investing in STO and managing security tokens are a bit different from uh, from either regular securities because they're on blockchain, or they're different from the traditional crypto digital assets because they've been regulated. So, using Starbucks dashboard technology, we actually bring those merging those two worlds. So, from one side. It's a, it's a regular security and uh, it should be treated like this. On the other hand, it's a, it's, it's a crypto asset. So all the benefits of managing and using crypto assets are kind of inherent into the platform. So let me share the screen and go through, uh, go through there. Yep, will be perfect. The dashboard. We see your screen. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I, will, I will be quick. Uh, again, that's an investor's view. That's an example uh, of Starbucks, uh, Starbucks investor's view, but the identical uh, SaaS software as, as a, uh, will be implemented for Mariana Mining. So and any investor that would like to join the offering and be a part of uh, Mariana Mining will be able to log into a separate cabinet it's a separate dashboard uh, where the securities will be stored and managed. So by looking at the dashboard, again, it's very important to pass the KYC because if you are not a KYC person, basically you will not be liable to, um, to manage those securities, to invest in those. And to, obviously for the secondary trading, it also be prohibited unless you can't do basically nothing unless you're KYC verified. That can be seen here. Uh, from the operations, uh, initially you can buy uh, on the primary sale, which is an STO, but on the further stages, you can be able to sell. And again, that's a, that's a private security, which now un being unlocked for the secondary market. So you can sell that or you can transfer it to a third party. You have own limits, which, uh, which the issuer in our case, where you're on a mining will, be impl will implement. So any investor would have a minimum amount in our case, and in case of uh, Mariana Mining, the minimum amount is 10,000 euros. Uh, there would be a secondary limit. So if you want to sell those uh, your tokens, uh, that we're going to unlock on, on further stages, but that's also possible and it's also managed via, via limits. Again, all the information about the accounts, your tokenized securities, your assets that you have. Uh, from that dashboard, you will have sophisticated information on the corporate profile of Mariana Mining. Again, in our case, it's a stubborn technology. So you can, you'll be able to get access on the updated pitches, certificates, all the documentation 
of the Mariana Mining Company, which is very important to do your own research with. So that's kind of internal uh, information that Mariana uh, reveals to the investors. Again, you can buy tokens anytime at, at the point of the secondary after the STO is completed, you'll be able to sell your tokens uh, to third parties, but that's something that we will uh, speak on the later stages. Uh, the management team, so you can have a look uh, if there's new people in the management. So Mariana will be uh, updating this corporate profile so for the investors. Uh, there's a section called investment opportunity. We know that uh, most of uh, most of uh, offerings, most of the companies create one. Uh, security token, but we, from the technology standpoint, we don't limit them. So uh, just give it a, an example that there could be a several security tokens. Let's say one is the revenue share and the second will be a stock certificate and so on. So the system allows to have multiple securities and you as a compliant KYC investor be able to invest in multiple securities of, 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 of a single issuer. Uh, that's something that it's uh, still under development, but you can also uh, see that this this DS swap. We use a, uh, a decentralized uh, AMN technology, like a simple swap, but we uh, we alter that and uh, you know create the possibility of using the swap technology, but just for security tokens, which is a great of the market because private uh, securities they usually lack secondary market uh, and it's quite difficult to sell your security on the private market. So we do our best to unlock that. Uh, so we believe uh, at some point that security tokens of Mariana Mining will be tradable via, via the idea swap, but again, uh, they can be sent as a P2P transfer as well. Uh, there's, a, there's more than enough information about the physical investment opportunity. So uh, we kind of merge the criteria of, of, of a classical securities uh, approach and the crypto approach. So you have that, that mixture of both worlds. And uh, you as an investor would be able to see your transactions. You can, uh, if you go through the buy process, I will not go through that in details, but you can choose a wire transfer, a crypto transfer, the wire transfer will open up to generate the invoice, which sent. So we try to create a um, kind of great flow for for the regular investor and easy to easy to go with. And uh, once uh, once we deploy that for Mariana Mining, you will an, an STO will be unlocked. You will be able to participate in the in the offering. So uh, again, that's a, that's a dashboard from the investor side. There's also from the product side. There's a, a, a management system for the issuer itself, where, where the issuer manage their securities, manage their investors, conducts dividend payments. As Jen said, the Mario, Mariana Mining will be paying dividends on a monthly basis. So the system will be constantly used uh, to kind of bring you guys uh, returns. So that's that's about that I want to, uh, you know, share information about the platform itself. Again, you can go on Stubbox.io and find out more information on how the dashboard works and what technology it utilizes. But from the mm -hmm. investor standpoint, I hope that you will enjoy that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Jin. Jin, thank you for the introduction. And now let's move forward to questions to Will and Igor that we can to move forward with this discussion. But before that, I just want to point out that probably Guy, uh, Will and Igor just don't understand how cool they are and how cool it is what they are doing. Just to provide a perspective, what is 150% IRR, which they mentioned? A conventional IRR of most investments is like 10 or 15%. 12% or uh, sorry, 20% or 25% is considered very good. And here you have like 150. So this is a just skyrocket profitability. It means that every year you get your investment back 
uh, even if uh, not taking into account the appreciation of crypto. So the investment is extremely good. Another point to mention uh, that I want to point out uh, regarding the pre-sale. This is the benefit of participating in these live streams and being part of Stobox community because all other investors who will come through advertisement, etc., will know about this project only at the point where it is already being executed. Well, you have an opportunity to invest in the private sale at a 35% discount, which means 35% high return. So th this is why you need to be with us and participate in those live streams. And this is what we want to provide you with this community. And lastly, notice when they said on the beginning about prospects, etc. So just to clarify what it means. Usually, if you want to do something that they will and Igor are doing, you would need to spend at least a year on doing all the kind of approvals with the regulator, preparing documents, etc. If you are choosing the STO route, you can do it uh, in the worst case scenario, probably in six months. In the best case scenario, in uh, in in two months, if is everything if is done swiftly enough and you have your documents in place. So there is extreme added efficiency to the financial system. And now this probably leads us to our first question to Will Igor, asking uh, we would like to hear why have you decided to go this innovative route, given that it is not as well tried and there are many risks. Why have you decided to raise from the community? via crypto instruments instead of going to large traditional investors who are sitting on the piles of printed money? I mean, I, I, can, I can give a simple answer to that. We don't like them. <laughs> but also, ultimately, no, the, the, the process that we went through is we looked at everything. So we took everything into consideration, but it was more from the time angle, the exemptions that we could work with uh, or towards and ultimately we had to take an opinion on on the minimum. Um, obviously, it's higher than what we wanted it to be, uh, but ultimately, that is the comfortable. Firstly, we were being advised by uh, other people that it should be higher, but we decided on the ten thousand because we see that it allows people who might not be that might not have great sums of money to participate. I mean, that was the entire purpose of of the operation from the beginning. Uh, but we just had to make a few concessions as we were going along, essentially. Uh, but I mean, in a nutshell, that, that's that's the main main element. I don't know if Igor wants to add anything to that. Um, yeah, I'll just say that it started uh, over a couple of years and uh, thinking of what crypto project we can do here. Um, so we're looking at real estate tokens because we're both in real estate here. You know, that's our forte. Um, and then it was just com compared to crypto mining and the returns and the and the scalability and and the ease of operation. I don't think anything can touch it in that sense. And secondly, for crowdfunding, we'd rather have you know an opportunity to work with our friends instead of a, a rich venture capitalist, if I, mm -hmm. if I can put it like that. You know. Um, and I think, honestly, think the crowdfunding method is is the future. It's a way to bypass, you know, venture capitalists and and, and banks in that sense, where you'd have to give away sixty percent or fifty percent of the company. This way, we all make very good money without without any corporate influence into that. So, that's about it. I like this idea and this honest reply. I also believe that community-driven businesses are the future. Jin, you wanted to add something. I just want to add that this is exactly the same reason why Starbucks didn't go for the VC rounds and actually creating their own, our own STO. That community can benefit our growth rather than rich guys being even more rich. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So, Will, Igor, you worked the STO role and uh, you uh, experience different hurdles on the way and you are among the pioneers creating the new industries. What three pieces of advice would you give to other business owners who would like to conduct token offering? I'll, I'll start again. Um, yeah. So the three things that I would say is give yourself enough time, um, including doing enough research into what you into what you're aiming to achieve. Um, also, look at you know the costs from, and expect additional costs as you're going along. Um, and the third thing, uh, ultimately, would be well, they're, they're the two they're the two main things actually that I would I would um, 
I would suggest, but also just mapping the route out in a logical and coherent manner um, is also very important. Yeah, I'd like... Uh, so I'd good just... things count at three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say um, be very realistic. Avoid being optimistic because uh, you'll only mess up your own timelines, um, which Will and I did. Um, we had a different timeline and, you know, it, it takes more than what you project. So I don't mean don't be pessimistic, but be realistic. So always add, you know, not only 20%, but 50% to your timelines. And, and secondly, surround yourself with people that know what they're doing because uh, the project might quickly have a downfall if you don't. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, lawyers, accountants, advisors. Um, it's better to, to, to pay more than to save money and, you know, mess the whole project up. It, those are the two things I'd, I'd specify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you that you shared these insights because, as you know, the raising through security token, it is very innovative solution for the B2B businesses. And it is great that you happy to share the insights with uh, other entrepreneurs during this process. Yeah, that, uh, that's a very good insight. The point about being pessimistic and timelines, it like hurts a lot. We experience it for us as well. So this, this, is, a, this is a common problem that you encounter when you're in business overall. Something always is uh, becoming messed up. Uh, another question I wanted to ask, you probably answered it already in your 20 minute long presentation. And now if you would have to do an elevator pitch or between 30 and 60 seconds, how would you summarize the main reasons to invest in Mariana Mining? What are the principal benefits? Um, I'm, I'm, I'll go on this. So, I mean, the main thing would be passive rewards and hands-off investment, essentially, uh, as, as simply as that. Um, the other thing as well is we based everything on our experience of business itself. So you've got all of the information there for you to do your background checks on the figures that we have provided. Um, and ultimately, when I say passive, it will be issued on a monthly basis. And as I think I've mentioned before, you just need to really, uh, you can think of this in terms of auto compounding uh, would be a good analogy, uh, simply because as we expand on the equipment naturally, in accordance with our figures, you get more rewards as the um, lifespan of the operation goes on. Essentially, uh, but the, then, and then actually, the, the final thing is, our figures don't take into account staking capital gains, which you can do separately, and also, uh, which will be very lucrative to you and your investment. In addition to what we are doing, so I'll just leave that for you, yeah, I think I think we'll pretty much covered it. I would I would emphasize the fact that I think everyone's here to to make money primarily. Um, we haven't made a new AI, you know. It's uh, still crypto mining with with immersion cooling. Um, it's not it's not um, innovative in that sense, but it's highly lucrative. Um, as Boris mentioned, the IRR being what 150, 168 percent. Um, just from the mining. So imagine if you stake that or the capital gains on it, now you can imagine the return itself. And I would say that's the primary point. Um, secondly, we're regulated, so you know, and, and audited, so, so you know that it's, a, it's gonna be a transparent investment that will give you a steady source of income. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys, those were amazing replies. Yeah, thank you guys for your questions and for, for your answers. Uh, let's move on to the questions from the community uh, that I see, and I will ask them chronologically. And it, the part of them, it is for Stobox, and the part of them are for, for Mariana Manning, and I think we will answer them together. So the first questions, uh, the first question that I see, what is the name of the company which conducted the external audit? And from... Right, so yeah, I can... I, yeah, can, I can jump in here. So, I mean, in terms of the external audit, there's two things that a person could be meaning here. Is the third party audit that we're going to get done in the future and the audit of the figures that we've had already had done. So I'll answer both of them separately. So the first one in terms of the figures that we already had done, um, it is we've had SDO box 
look at the figures. We've had also had Big Spit look at the figures and their partners, and then again recheck each other. They're, they're the two main parties in that process. In terms of the second thing, which is the external third party audit that will be occurring in the future if the mining operation is successful, it will be somebody that operates in both BBI and Georgia. So to, for complete transparency in, in the business and also for reporting to the clients and the investors. So ultimately, that could be somebody like KPMG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your answer. And I want to add that from the technological standpoint, uh, Stobox and Stobox dashboard passed an audit from Signsoft company. It is international IT company with 32 years experience on the market working with uh, uh, Microsoft, IBM, NASA, Salesforce. So the dashboard from the technological standpoint is fully audited by this uh, by the Signsoft. And uh, if you uh, if you want, we can share with you the complete. Uh, audit report from them and as will mentioned it, it is true that uh, stobox conducted the full cycle of sto and stobox uh, prepared and was engaged in many details of the full process of sto of mariana mining and we prepared their ppms and a lot of necessary documentation from the legal standpoint and uh, mariana mining passed the audit from stobox as well uh, Boris, if you want, you can dive in. Yeah, that's true. Actually, uh, the uh, investment analyst I am working with for uh, for this project is an extremely tedious project. Any kind of financial statement you bring to him, he just rips them off, gets to any small point he can find to them, get them back again and make even more perfect. So yeah, it, it was quite a serious work done to ensure that this is audited properly. Obviously, there is still uh, assumptions that are taken as a basis of the model. Uh, there isn't any models that is with, uh, without any kinds of risk or any kinds of assumption. But you know, those assumptions are quite good. For example, we don't take into account the future appreciation of cryptocurrency, which uh, is obviously going to happen. So I would say that our assumptions is, are rather good and quite conservative. Yep. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Boris, <laughs> for, for the answers. Let's move on because we have a lot of questions. The next one, do you have any backups for fourth major situation. I mean, if something happens and affects the mining, will the investors still receive their dividends? Their dividends. Right, oh, well, I can answer this. So like a, a fourth major event is essentially an act of God. So I think that would be <laughs> difficult to plan for. Um, however, the fact that the cells are easily removable, let's say there was something such as a war or, or whatever occurred, we can essentially take it from A to B and ship it to another location or alternatively if we got a better deal let's say in another country in south america we can also take it there you know and get it shipped across very very easily um in the event of a force measure event happening um the dividends are subject uh, the profit the profit of the dividend should i say is subject to the mining operation itself so there would be obviously a point of stagnation while we sort out the situation from a to b but as i said i mean the first major event is fairly difficult to plan for. Mm -hmm. Yep, great. Thank you guys for the for the answer. Let's move on. Uh, how long you can get free benefits like tax free, etc., in the industry free zone area? Is there any sp specific years? Um. No, it, it, it depends on the, the deal you make with the free zone operators. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your business, how lucrative your business is and what, what you can, you know, deal with them. There are four zones in Georgia. So, you know, you, you still have kind of negotiation power with them. And that goes for water costs, the kilowatt hour costs. You can, you can pretty much negotiate uh, mm -hmm. anything. Um, we're trying to get a 10 year deal to last, uh, as long as the, as long as our project basically. So if we, if we get that, that'll be, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other, just to jump in on that as well. So the other thing is that as, as Hugo says, it's all about getting concessions and, the other um, and also, um, their relationship in terms of the regulations as well, that's going on place, uh, but 
potentially can move. But in terms of concessions, I mean, the minimum that we would be looking for is a five-year concession with the opportunity to extend it for another five years to make sure essentially the entire operation is covered. Mm -hmm. Yep, great. Thank you for sharing uh, the answers. Uh, moving on to the other questions. Uh, by the way, is mining still profitable, assuming current BTC price, especially after the halving? So, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in this and then Igor can, can take over. So, in terms of being profitable, that will depend on our, well, our model uh, essentially helps in that regard in, in relation to us lowering electricity price and the location actually so the geographical location is an important factor because we lower electricity prices through our agreements with the free trade zone which is obviously beneficial to any uh, mining farm we also have the immersion mining tech and with that that, re that reduces your power consumption by 30 percent alone for the equipment and i mean by the hardware and mm -hmm. then also the associated power consumption of the air based cooling systems itself which is significant um, so instantly you're already making yourself more profitable in these regards in terms of the beat, uh, the Bitcoin price. It will still, you know, the regard, I'll let Ego take over in regards to this, but they're the main things. And then, sorry, just, just before you got to take, so the other thing that we have is we've got, we already have risk mitigations in place in the fact that actually we're not really looking at Bitcoin uh, in terms of mining the proof of work. We're looking at other cryptocurrencies and we have various cryptocurrencies to spread risk. Mm -hmm. And it is complementary match the next question. What uh, before you, uh, sorry, excuse me, Rod, before you move, I would just want to mention that actually Halloween is taken into account in the current financial model already. So the return that we offer uh, that you mentioned previously already takes into account the future Halloween schedule. Thank you. Forgot that. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Boris. The complimentary question is what will be the currencies that you are going to mining uh, when it's, it's going to go live? So there's, there's various currencies in there. I mean, really what we've done in, in, for the purposes of the estimation is we've came to an assumption in regards to what we're doing. However, that will obviously be subject to things such as the Ethereum, um, Ethereum working and going over to proof of stake rather than proof of work. We have mm -hmm. already accounted for that in terms of 5% of the mining model. However, it could easily be that something else is more profitable in terms of hardware um, and everything else. So that we look at mitigate, well, look at moving that into something else. Some of the other currencies that we're looking at is Kadena, CKB, um, and also Digibyte. These are all on various algorithms and also you know, various hardware that needs to be bought for it. So yeah, there is a, there's, they're the main elements that we're looking at. Well, sorry, as well, Bitcoin Cash is another one, uh, an important one that we, we've looked at and decided that in long term there's, there's a use case for that and it will be profitable um, in the long run. And so, yeah, we've, as I said before, we've spread the risk across various currencies in the report, in the documentation, and now planning, and it's always been a consideration. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and just, just uh, did you say when is it going live as well? Is that the second part? So the second part of when is it going live is, yep. as I said before, hopefully by the end of September. Mm -hmm. uh, by the end of September, the investment begins. Then the operation itself depends on when we raise up the minimum amount. So that's an escrow account. And that gets, obviously, once we get to the two million, we can then start the queue. Mm -hmm. yep. And from that, and sorry, and just, just to go in a little bit more from and what I mean by that is procurement. So you're going to have a time frame of procuring hardware, and that's not just a mine, uh, immersion mining tech, that's also a hardware in terms of mining technology. You have to also plan for the fit out of the space that we're going to be putting it in, in terms of every element, NEP, etc., and the water cooling towers and, and things like this. And there'll be a design period for that as well, but we'll facilitate that right, well, well, well before that period. Uh, is, is done and the, the long leader the lead times associated with the procurement as well so it all depends on essentially when the minimum cap is raised mm -hmm. yep thank you for your answer the next one 
uh, will be able to see the presentation as a separate document to go through? I will answer this. Yes, of course. We will post uh, the full presentation in the Telegram group of Mariana Mining. So please join the group to see the presentation and to stay tuned a lot about the last updates and the developments of the Mariana Mining STO. Moving forward, the question for Mariana Mining from PC School. How was your experience working with Tobox team uh, to make the STO? I mean, the process uh, was easy, interesting, or required some additional challenges? Well, I, I can jump in. I know Igor's going to have plenty to say on this one. Um, look, the, it, it, was, it was useful. Everybody, the team is good. Um, how, however, everybody needs to realize that this entire process is actually fairly new to every person uh, in the industry, regardless of it, whether it be SDO box ourselves, the lawyers, the banks, <laughs> every every person. It's a very new new technology um, in itself, and also a new method of uh, raising funds. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your your feedback. It is a pleasure. Uh, why you have chosen STO instead of ICO or IAO? Yeah, right. Um, simply, we want it to be uh, regulated. Uh, we want mm -hmm. investors to have their baseline protections, uh, regulation-wise, and uh, it, it's just it's easier to be to be regulated. You, you know your frames. You know what you have to do to be you know legally there. With an ICO, there's so much retrospective changes, et cetera. So wh why not? The, the question is, why not? Why wouldn't you do an STO if you, if you could choose between an ICO and an STO, you know? I would also add that um, the world goes uh, and moves towards, uh, and the crypto moves towards uh, compliance. And uh, the obvious reasons if you if your crypto if your let's say investment instrument is uh, brings the dividend if uh, it's not just a utility token but it offers a participation in the capital that's treated in the whole world as a security and this is why most of the i think i mean to my personal understanding this is uh why a lot of icos didn't uh, didn't didn't go well because they were securities in the beginning because they were offering uh, the the interest on, on those tokens and if that happens it should be regulated and we see the regulation now being developed in most of the civilized world so I absolutely agree with eager that not only because we have a choice basically we don't have a choice this is the only way if you want to bring <laughs> dividends to your investors SDO is the only way to, to do so otherwise you're outside the regulatory framework and it's just a matter of time when you be kind of uh, be asked by regulators what you guys doing so i think that's the only way thank you yeah jin completely agree with you goes uh, goes through the utility tokens you don't have the rights to to have the dividends or uh, or backed some assets uh, to be invested so I, STO currently it is cu currently STO to be honest it is a trend and a lot of company uh, due the COVID they shifting completely online and choosing the new business model in real estate market in mining company uh, in other industries in natural resources to change their business model and to spread the world to make a company more profitable so currently we see that a lot of financial instruments moving to blockchain mo moving to uh, STO and it is on, uh, only the only way to make the regulated offering for the investors and to not scary uh, from the regulators okay guys so the last question that i see uh, how about soft cap and hard cap so the question is if uh, the Marian Mariana Manning have the soft cap and hard cap, hard cap. Well, um, the soft cap is two million. The hard cap is five million. Uh, we have two separate financial models 
that have been calculated for both uh, areas on our um, on our website for you to download. Obviously, if the if we hit the hard cap, that would equate to more equipment we need to purchase, and also that's in terms of hardware and in terms of uh, immersion mining hardware, crypto mining hardware. Uh, but however, the space that we have, first of all, the immersion mining technology is very um, space friendly, and also the space that we are able to rent facilitates both the soft and the hard cap. Um, I don't think there's really much more to say on that. Mm -hmm. Yep, great, thank you. I see the new question from Higuro. Mining is obviously a very competitive business, but how do you see the longevity of the companies in the mining industry? Do you see it is as something that could span over a decade or a few years? Yeah, um, that's a that's a good question actually. Um, that's why we set a ten year period. Um, I would I would expect at least six seven good years, but it could be ten good years. You know. Um, we don't think it's going to be much more than a decade, but I, I believe there's going to be another decade of it where it's, you know, where the returns are good. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, so I can, I can jump in on, on this as well. So yeah, the, in terms of the competitiveness of the business model, what you'll find is actually we're quite surprised at this was there's not many companies that are doing emerging mining technology um, where, you know, we would have thought that whether that's making uh, they're scared of change, we don't know. But we would have thought that when they look at the model, they will be doing so. So actually, in that regard, we're ahead of the trend. Um, so our business model is, is lucrative, more lucrative, let's say, than standard air-based cooling systems that are in operation um, throughout the moment. So in terms of competitive competitivity, we're there. Uh, in terms of longevity, longevity um, yeah, I mean, Look, the mine, the currency that we're mining, will be will be able to mine for the next ten years. So that's not an issue. The one thing is Ethereum, um, and I know that is within our financial calculations. Uh, however, we've reduced the percentage that we are allocating to that drastically. And also, as I said before, the, the great thing with our model is if there's something, or if you see a scenario which is going to be more profitable for the investors, then mm -hmm. we can adapt quickly, effectively, and and implement it. If you allow me actually to jump in, I also want to comment on the longevity and the competitiveness of the industry. There are standard techniques you can use to analyze the attractiveness of the industry as an investment, as a business, such as the most basic one is uh, Porter's Five Forces, when you see on the threats of substitutions, competition between suppliers, etc. And one point to note is that from this kind of analysis, mining is actually quite an attractive industry with high longevity. For example, you don't really have high concentration of all bargaining power among suppliers. So you can choose among different kinds of technology. There isn't high threat of substitution because the blockchain is not moving anywhere and cryptocurrencies are not moving anywhere. Given that proof of work is the most uh, FP, uh, uh, is the most secure uh, mining algorithm, you're probably seeing the proof of work uh, remain in the next decades uh, and probably even centuries of blockchain existing overall. So the only real uh, problems that you may have in the industry is a strong uh, rivalry between the mining firms themselves. But here, again, there are several factors that deter the entry of new participants in this industry, therefore reducing the level of the competition. The main of these being the actually high entry cost, because you need the economy for scale. You need to, for example, conduct an STO to raise, uh, to raise money for mining, which means that you don't, don't going to see competition rising super sharp, sharply. You see it from the perspective, for example, of many uh, mining companies being large consolidates. This, is a, this proves the fact that you need uh, economies of scale and therefore that the entry in this industry would be deterred. Second point is also that you have multiple different cryptocurrency, which means that the competition is spread between the cryptocurrencies and as far as the crypto market and number of cryptocurrencies is growing you the competition will be spread between those different opportunities so overall i think from a perspective of like standard strategic industry analysis this one is quite good from a long-term perspective and uh, now with this last question we are entering uh, we are uh, we are uh, finishing our live stream 
I am grateful for everybody for, who joined. Thank you for being so active and asking your question. You, uh, you help not only yourself to make the right decision, but also everybody else who is watching live stream. Therefore, your participation is extremely important and we are grateful for it. Also, I'm grateful to my teammates who joined this live stream. Please, everybody, provide your uh, last word what you want to say to everybody and to the community. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, meanwhile, uh, everybody wants to go to the moon by looking at the Boris background. He actually reached the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Rockstar. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Will and Iga, thank you very much. Uh, Jens and everyone from the community stay with us. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, news uh, with Mariana Mining uh, going along. Uh, we 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 streamlining this uh, first test yo. So again, as well said, we will see the first uh, um, the first uh, the, the opening of uh, in the mid September. But uh, we'll keep you posted. And thank you for the great interview. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Um, appreciate the you know, the opportunity to discuss the project. Take it easy. Cheers, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you in the group. Um, and be sure to uh, visit the website. So check the financial documents out. Or just if you're interested in mining in general, read up on it, see what the future holds. And thank you very much for your time. Yes. Thank you for your answers. Thank you uh, for all of your viewers. We will drop their website of Mariana Mining and Telegram chat below so you can join and stay tuned of the project updates. Thank you for your great answers and for presentation of your project and stay tuned and not miss their full release and the live announcement of Mariana Mining to be the first shareholder of the company. And if you didn't sale. do it yet, Yes, so subscribe to Stobox YouTube channel and to other social media we have to not miss not only Mariana Mining's private side, but also other projects that you're going to launch. You're going to love them. Thank you, Thank guys. Thank you, everybody.